So who's better for the trucking environment? What trucking policies and what is the comparison between a Trump presidency and a more or less Harris presidency and what that would look like for trucking? Now I'm going to go through this in terms of the agency and what each administration would consider or go into as their platform or what they've at least said that they would do. First off, uh, the agency in question in the beginning is the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration or the FMCSA. So if Trump was to become president, what would happen is they are actually saying that they uh, have supported hours of service flexibility, including offering also regulatory relief during the pandemic to ensure supply chain efficiency. Also, they have upheld electronic locking device mandate. They've also supported entry-level driver training. They've also proposed a pilot program to train individuals aged 18 to 20 years of age to operate commercial vehicles interstate. And also they've initiated temporary waivers to allow for flexibilities in commercial learners permits and also CDL testing requirements during the pandemic, providing key supply chain relief as well. Also, they've determined that California and Washington's state meal and rest break laws uh, were preempted by federal hours of service for proposes uh, for uh, excuse me for purposes of uh, interstate commerce, ensuring one set of interstate hours of service rules. Okay, so from the FMCSA agency, if Trump presidency, a Trump Vance presidency was to happen. This is on that level what they would be looking to change in this uh, mandate. On the Harris side, they're receptive to limiting flexibility in current hours of service rules. Also, there's interest in pursuing a safety uh, technology mandate, such as speed limiters on trucks. They also have an interest in pursuing rulemaking on side underride guard mandates. They're also established the Safe Driver Apprenticeship Pilot Program under the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. And FMCSA added requirements to SDAP that uh, decrease motor carrier participation. They've also helped spur interest in trucking apprenticeship, apprenticeships. Also, they're initiated uh, significant efforts to upgrade carrier and broker registration systems to bolster the security of FMCSA processes and try to prevent fraud and cargo theft. And as a senator, uh, also defended California's enforcement of onerous, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, meal and rest break laws on motor carriers that are operating in interstate commerce. Now on the US uh, DOT side, the Federal Highway Administration, uh, if Trump presidency, a Trump Vance presidency was to happen, uh, looking to streamline national environmental uh, policy act regulations, potentially making project approvals faster and less costly. Also, they've placed greater focus on highway projects and when making discretionary program awards. Also focused on attention on the truck parking shortage by supporting the coalition created under the previous administration. Also, they've expected to eliminate or zero out national electric vehicle infrastructure funding intended to build a national charging network. They've also expect, uh, expected to eliminate discretionary FHWA grants that award charging projects for medium and heavy duty trucks. Now, on the Harris side, when, it's, when it comes to the Federal Highway Administration, they required states and metropolitan planning organizations to establish declining greenhouse gases emissions on the national highway system. They also undid significant aspects of Trump's uh, NEPA reforms and added new requirements that are likely to make project approvals more complex, time consuming and also costly in general. Also, there's discretionary program awards favored non-highway projects and focused on equity and resilience. Also supported parking shortage solutions through discretionary project awards and supportive statements, though the co coalition has been fairly inactive. Also, they've expanded national electric vehicle infrastructure or NEVI funds for 
uh, projects that will support the building of national charging networks or electrifying the industry and continued also to support for the joint office with the Department of Energy on the push towards zero emission vehicles um, as soon as possible, according to them. Another agency is the Wage and Honor Division or the WHD Division. Uh, Trump advance are saying that they've issued common sense standards for determining independent contractor status. They've also issued a helpful opinion letter on whether control is exercised over independent contractor truck drivers by a hiring entity when they require safety measures required by law. They've also issued a helpful opinion letter to compensa uh, com uh, compensability of time in a trucker's sleeper berth. They've also issued rulemaking providing clarity for determining joint employership under Fair Labor and Standards Act. They've also fixed an Obama-era uh, overtime rule that was struck down in litigation. They've also issued final rule clarifying whether certain benefits must be included in the regular rate used to calculate overtime. So that's what you would expect from a Trump advance leadership administration. On the Harris side, they've rescinded the Trump-era independent contractor rule and replaced it with a rule that is more ambiguous and threatens the independent contractor business model. They also withdrew opinion letters on control and safety measures required by hiring entities. They also withdrew the sleeper berth opinion letter. They also significantly increased overtime threshold and they've rescinded the Trump era joint employer rule. Okay, so that's from a wage and honor division uh, side or the, from the Department of Labor. Another Department of Labor subsection is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. And uh, they, uh, Trump and Vance have stated that they recognize there were no one-size-fits-all pandemic protections for employees. Rescinded also policy allowing third parties to be part of OSHA workplace inspections. On the Harris side, they've issued an emergency temporary standard for COVID-19 that would have been disastrous for, of course, the industry. Uh, they've issued final rule to allow non-employee third parties to be part of OSHA. Uh, they've also proposed a standard on heat injury and illness that, if finalized, would require employers <clears throat> to monitor workplaces for heat hazards, provide breaks and water, and have a plan in place to deal with heat emergencies. Another Department of Labor side is the Office of Labor Management Standards, and uh, for Trump, uh, he's rescinded the Obama-era Obama uh, era, uh, persuader rule, which improperly interfered with the attorney-client relationship between employers and counsel. They also issued financial transparency regulation for labor union trusts, or Form T1, to deter and detect corruption and allow union members to make informed decisions regarding their workplace representatives. On the Harris side, they rescinded uh, the Form T1 regulation relating to union financial transparency and also engaged in numerous actions to curtail the use of consultants by employers during labor organizing efforts, resulting in more employees hearing union-only information rather than the information they should be hearing. Also, another Department of Labor side is the Employment and Training Administration, or ETA. For Trump, uh, issued a rule on industry-recognized apprenticeship programs, or IRAPs, to allow individuals to obtain relevant training while getting paid to learn. The Harris side, they rescinded the Trump-era IRAP rule, proposed adding more red tape to the registered apprenticeship program, and also helpful uh, in getting more interest in trucking RAPs, okay? Another part is the National Labor Relationship Board, okay? So these guys, uh, first, uh, for a Trump side, it would look uh, as this. So adopted a reasonable standard for independent contractor status under the National Labor Relations Act for deciding whether an individual is an employee or an independent contractor. They also issued a rule that extended joint employer status only when a, uh, a putative employer um, actually exercised control over employees and they protected employees from profane or racially or sexually offensive languages 
by allowing employers to prohibit and discipline individuals for such conduct. On the Biden slash Harris slash Wald side, Biden appointees adopted an ill-advised IC standard under this NLRA that makes it more likely that the independent contractors will be considered employees actually. They also issued a joint employer rule that unreasonably extends joint employer status, resulting in less employer flexibility and increases potential liabilities. Biden's appointed NLRB general counsel has aggressively worked to curtail employer speech on unionized issues and has pushed the board to tilt the playing field in favor of unions and has generally pursued actions to further unionization. Biden also employees changed the standard for dealing with unfair labor practices in the context of a unionized election, potentially resulting in a union being imposed even when employees vote against forming a union. Okay. On the DEA side or the Drug Enforcement Administration, uh, Trump did not have much to say about this at the moment. Um, on Harris's side, they proposed mar marijuana reclassification, posing serious risks to commercial vehicles, highway, and public safety as well. I guess we'll see what happens. On the Department of Energy side, uh, Trump says they want to reestablish an all of the above energy approach. They've also expected to dismantle the joint office and remove the in interagency authority and coordination of a federal framework to electrify the transportation network. The responsibility would likely be redistributed to individual agencies. There's also expected to rescope national labs research to traditionally focused energy efficiency work and expected to reduce the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy budget to focus on vehicle technology efficiencies as opposed to only awarding projects for zero emissions. On the Harris side, they're expected to continue the Joint Office and Joint Electric Vehicle Working Group responsibilities to electrify the transportation uh, network. They also expected to create a new super truck IV program focused only on zero emissions vehicles technologies. They're also expected to continue funding programs that focus on research and development for battery chemistry and zero emission vehicle components, low interest ZEV manufacturing loans, grants for reshoring these electric vehicle manufacturing components, and investments for national labs and national renewable energy laboratory research. They're also expected to grow NREL research focused on battery and hydrogen performance and range. On the Environmental Protection Agency side, Trump has said that he, there's expected to deny California's waiver authority for the advanced clean fleets rule. Expected also to issue an executive order setting non-enforcement for existing greenhouse gas phase three stringency targets and reopen the GHG3 establishing new targets and timelines. Also expected to eliminate and rescind funding for the clean school bus grant program, clean port programs and clean medium and heavy duty truck programs. Also expected to zero out, this is Trump, zero out the bipartisan diesel emissions reduction act program or DERA which incentivizes fleets to replace old polluting trucks and engines with new cleaner vehicles. They will also institute life cycle analysis as part of a major clean air rules. So that's the Trump side. On the Harris side, they're expected to grant California authority to enforce advanced clean fleets or ACFs in line with past support for California's waiver authority as Senator and Vice President. Also expected to work on greenhouse phase four standards for post model year 2032 vehicles and could reopen greenhouse phase three to include new ZEV targets for 2030 to 2032 vehicles. They're also expected to increase grant funds for the purchase of ZEV trucks and buses, expected to restrict Diesel Emissions Reduction Act funds to only ZEV funds, including or excuse me, excluding new diesel 
natural gas and propane engines. It's also uh, looking that they're going to continue support for, for preferential tax treatment of sustainable aviation uh, uh, fuel, or SAF, of $1.50 to drive, to, to drive decarbonization efforts in aviation. One point on this SAF stuff, um, their maximums at the moment is a mixture of up to 50%. Nowhere near that are airplanes getting or airlines getting some are in the eight to nine percent range that is a mixture so eight or nine percent of the tank has saf components okay the rest is just regular fuel how is this going to work out where are they going to find you know first the production next uh, the storage for all this stuff i it's going to be very difficult to do so if if that's what they're planning to do on on that side also, as a government, or sorry, as a governor, Waltz supported and adopted California's EV targets for light duty, and as governor, governor uh, Waltz supported Minnesota establishing its own low carbon fuel standard, and also Waltz supported ethanol and biofuels as well as a cap and trade system for carbon credits. Okay. Next, the U.S. Department of Treasury. So on the Trump side, they are uh, passed the Sweeping Tax Cuts and Jobs Act 2017 through budget reconciliation and actively touting a policy of raising revenue through the imposition of major tariffs, 60% on all goods from China and 10% for, on goods from other countries. The Harris side, they're actively supporting uh, raising the top corporate rate to 28%. As a senator, Harris supported raising the top marginal income tax rate to 39.6%, raising capital gains tax rates to ordinary income rates, um, raising the corporate income tax to 35%, and expanding the estate tax rules and plans. Also, as Vice President Harris supported a, a fiscal year 2025 budget proposal that would have imposed top individual tax rates on capital gains for earners filing over $1 million in income. As Vice President, Harris also supported passage of the Inflation Reduction Act with green energy production and technology incentives. As a Senator, Harris also opposed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Cuts, or a Jobs Act, excuse me. And as gov uh, Governor of Minnesota, Waltz approved a transportation bill raising the state gasoline tax by $0.05 cents per gallon and indexing it for inflation. Okay. Also, the Office of the United States Trade Representative, okay, so on this side, this is the Office of the President of the United States, Trump executed <clears throat> trade agenda through costly tariffs and aggressive economic actions, which were leveraged to strike deals with foreign governments, reforming NAFTA into the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, reshaping the trade pacts with Japan and South Korea, and the launch of new free trade talks with the UK and Kenya. Former President Trump also calls for closing of the US-Mexico border. If this closure is applied to the freight crossings, it would severely disrupt the 1.5 billion in trade every day between US and Mexico. On average, every day the US motor carrier industry collects $27 million hauling freight to and from US and Mexico. Okay, on the Harris side, the administration mostly kept Trump administrative, uh, administration trade practices in place like tariffs, while not initiating new trade deals with foreign governments. Harris, if elected, is expected to largely maintain that approach instead of focusing on broader economic initiatives that help raise environmental and labor standards. Harris has not threatened to shut down the U.S.-Mexico border. Instead, trying to get migrants not to come to the U.S. border. <laughs> so we'll see how that all works out. Also, the Federal Trade Commission, Trump did not state anything on this. That is the for now. On the Biden slash Harris side, Biden appointees engage in massive expansion of agency power by finalizing a rule to outlaw virtually all non-compete clauses in employment contracts, which was struck down in federal court and also initiated agency action to examine junk fees, including predatory towing to combat abuse. Okay, so this is an outline of 
the two different administrations, what they're looking to potentially implement, keep, change, or otherwise debate, argue about in the Senate or the House <clears throat> about different policies. And all of these different rules, a lot of these have to do with the trucking industry. What do you guys feel is the right approach? Who do you think would be a better suit for the American people, the Canadian people and Mexicans respectively as well when it comes to trucking and trucking policies? Please let me know down in the comments below and give this video a like, a share, a comment, subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you on the next video. There's a lot of videos that you guys can take a look on the channel and uh, I appreciate the support. It's free to do so. So thank you very much. Bye bye.